Hey, what's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newpert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to answer the question, when should you stick to single kettlebell workout programs? You know, as opposed to favoring or biasing double kettlebell workout programs or even mixing the two. So let's get into it. Now, if you've been following my work for any length of time, or maybe you haven't, and you're just new to this channel, a lot of people know me as the double kettlebell guy because I'm a big, big advocate of double kettlebell work and all the benefits that come along with learning how to do it. All right. But look, the reality is not everybody needs to or should actually do double kettlebell exercises and double kettlebell workout programs. Yeah. If you've been around for any length of time, shocking. I know, right? You're probably like, man, does this guy lost his mind? Nope. So let's discuss as whether or not you fall in that category. And how would you know if you fall in that category? Okay. All right. Number one should be obvious to most people. However, I'm afraid it's not. So I've got to bring it up. Okay. If you're new to kettlebell training, you should learn all the kettlebell skills with the single kettlebell exercises first before moving on to double kettlebell training. Now I have a whole series on my YouTube channel about the five levels of kettlebell training which you can check out in the link below the video. Um, we'll flash it up here what the video looks like so you can identify it by sight. All right, again, I'm not gonna go into great depth or in this video because I've already done it in that video in the subsequent series of videos. So again, I recommend you go back and watch those videos if you haven't already, okay? Number two, the number two reason is injury, okay? If you've had an injury, I generally recommend you start your training again or over right? With the single kettlebell exercises. Why? Well, the single kettlebell exercises allow you to address discrepancies in your strength between the two sides or any lost ranges of motion along with that lost strength that usually comes from injury. All right. And this is super important because uh, there's some research out there. I'm not going to quote it because that means I have to go digging for it. It's been around for about 10, 15 years that suggests that asymmetries between sides of your body, so between the left and right side, predispose you to either further injuries or greater risk of injury in the future. Okay. So take care of the asymmetries you have between two sides. Now, in case it's a lower back injury, you'll be using less load. So there's typically less chance of you re-injuring yourself in both the short term and the long term. Okay. So in a similar vein as injury, I just briefly alluded to it during the injury part of this video, right? But it's it's number three and that's asymmetries. Okay. Similar to injuries, many of us have asymmetries between the sides of our bodies, right? Again, between that left and right side. So loading yourself up with a pair of kettlebells all the time is a great way to reinforce those asymmetries, which, you know, if you don't address them, they can lead to multiple injuries in the long run. Uh, for example, you probably can't see it here on this video, but I'll hold my arm up. See that, that elbow? That's as much as it locks, okay? And that's as much as it bends. All right, now if we compare that to right the right side, okay, look at that. Big difference between the two. Okay, so uh, I have to be careful how I load myself because that can carry on further down the kinetic chain and that can show up in my back or my hips or my knees or, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Or abdominals, that that whole area, shoulders even, okay? So there, there's nothing I can do to fix that elbow that's, that's there with me until, right, they bury me, okay? Um, so I have to be aware of that, cognizant of it and be able to work around it. Okay. And work with it. Okay. So there's a, there's a perfect example. I broke that arm when I was 16 wrestling and that was a while ago. Okay. And there's just, again, there's nothing I can do about that. So here's an example, right? I do not do two hand swings, even though two hand swings are the entry point into the modern kettlebell system or modern, modern hard style kettlebell system. Anyway, as we know it, right. The two hand swings, because my left arm is shorter than my right arm, if I hold the kettlebell so the handle is parallel to my body, which you should, it causes my hips to rotate and then that aggravates my lower back. So for me, I stick with one hand swings. Okay, so perfect example of making sure uh, both sides are as even as possible so I don't further exacerbate that asymmetry. All right, uh, what's another example that I could give you? All right, so in my case, I can tell a, a major difference in heavy Turkish get-ups. So the more I need shoulder flexion, the more I need to put my arm back over my head, okay, which you, you, you don't, 
You don't have to have massive amounts of shoulder flexion if you got a light kettlebell because you can you can overcompensate by using your current strengths. But when the weight gets heavy, right, you need to be able to align your structure. So you need to be able to stack your joints, okay, one on top of the other in order to hold that kettlebell over your head. Otherwise, if you don't, your muscles are going to fatigue and it's going to come down and hit you, okay? So heavy Turkish get-ups are not that great for me because this elbow doesn't fully straighten. So I need extra shoulder flexion, okay, on the left side that I don't need on the right side, okay? So those are just two examples you may have similar examples or you may have it in your knees or your hips or your feet or whatever, but there's a, a perfect, two perfect cases in point for working around your asymmetries or working to make your asymmetries no longer asymmetries. Okay. All right. So next up, there are fourth reason why you would want to bias single kettlebell training work over double kettlebell training work is what we call power training. Now, Power is a measure of work and it's a quality you can and should train for, in my opinion. So we typically think of power expressing itself in sprinting, jumping, or throwing, but it's actually expressed in managing uh, not to fall, right? Which sounds kind of strange, right? It's the ability to not fall, which is a trader quality we all need as we get older, okay? So in case you don't know this, if you're, if you're, not approaching 60, or you don't have parents that are over 60, the number one fear of failure for men and women over 60 is the fear of falling. So power training can reverse that. Super important for health and longevity. Uh, furthermore, there are three things you can do or develop from power training. Okay, You can develop a fair amount of muscle from just power training. Those are our air quotes. I think we probably have to get air quotes in on every single video now. I'm gonna, if not, from now on, right? It's gonna be like, where's Waldo? It's gonna be, where's the air quotes? I might see if I can sneak in the air quotes on these videos. All right. Okay, so you can develop a fair amount of muscle from just power training. When I was Olympic lifting, my coach loved power training and speed training, and we use loads of, of 50 to 70 percent for speed training and uh, 60 to 80 percent for power training. And everything was done super explosively. And I built a fair amount of muscle in my upper body, traps, shoulders, upper back, uh, and then even my lower body. We did, typically did not load up the weight on squats. Typically, we stayed between 65 and 85% on the squats. And my legs got plenty strong and plenty big from staying in that range. All right. So let me just reiterate, you don't have to go heavy to build muscle. You can do it through power training. And that's accomplished really well with a single kettlebell. You can also get stronger from just power training, just power training. There's our air quotes. All right. And I think this is probably the best reason to use power training, especially if you're trending towards being overweight or you currently are overweight, is that power training improves your body's carbohydrate utilization, which means your body can use the blood sugar that it has, right? The carbohydrates that you eat, it can use them better. All right. And that improves your health. In other words, you can reverse the trend or the slide towards pre-diabetes type two or diabetes. Okay. So how do we do power training? Well, power training is typically developed with lower reps and higher sets in a range of about 30 to 40% of your body weight for swings. And if my memory serves me correctly, it's about 26 to 32% of body weight, your current body weight for snatches. So somebody's going to, I'm sure somebody's going to put in the uh, comment section, well, can I use doubles? here. Yeah, you can, but personally, I find that single kettlebell training is literally one less thing to think about and distract me from producing as much power as possible, right? So two kettlebells, two things I've got to manage, one kettlebell, just one thing. Plus here's something else to think about is with a single kettlebell, right? I can, if I'm doing power training with uh, swings or snatches, especially, especially snatches, I can get a much larger range of motion. So I can load the posterior hamstrings, posterior hamstrings, as if there's anterior hamstrings, the posterior chain. So the glutes, hamstrings, calves, right? Lower back, bottom of the feet. I can load those muscles to a greater extent, okay? Because I can put a bigger stretch on them with single kettlebell work than I can with double kettlebell work, all right? So uh, now one more thing, somebody's going to say, hey man, I've, I've read your emails. I've seen you talk in other places. I know you're a big fan of the double kettlebell clean and jerk. And that's true. That is absolutely true. I am, but... In the context of power training, you can produce more power with the snatch, right? It's easier to learn. It requires less shoulder and thoracic spine mobility than the jerk. Okay, so there's that. All right, so, so there you have it. Four different reasons 
to preferentially use single kettlebell workout programs and single kettlebell exercises over the double kettlebell exercises in double kettlebell workout programs. All right. It's kind of a mouthful. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Okay. Hope you found it helpful, useful. If you did click the like button, click the share button. If you haven't already click the subscribe button. And if you want more information, I'll leave some links in the description below to some power-based training programs, some single kettlebell power-based training programs that you can start using as soon as today, if you want to. All right. Stay strong, my friend.